and welcome. It really is my pleasure today to introduce Deepti Agrawal Mittal, an artist and designer who is a specialist in Madhubani painting art form. She has been into learning, teaching, and exhibiting this art since 1982. Her knowledge in art was limited to Indian folk art of Madhubani painting, which she learned from the state of Bihar since she was a childhood. But later, she started to capitalize on her experience in this ancient style and her interest in contemporary flares to create her own signature art style. She has exhibited extensively and has been juried twice as master artist in the prestigious Heritage's Arts Apprenticeship Program, an initiative by Humanities uh, Washington, a state of Washington's arts and history wing. She also is a wonderful teacher who has several students and during COVID-19 has started a beautiful program called Art with Heart. Speaking of heart, she also is using her talent to support Ekal Vidyalaya with be serving as an indie art ambassador. Ekal Vidyalaya is an organization that brings education to over 100,000 rural remote villages. And Indie Art is a competition that is being used to allow children in the US, children and adults in the US, to explore their creativity while bringing digital literacy to rural India. Deepti ji, welcome to Lokwani. Thank you so much, Ranjini ji. And that was such a lovely introduction. Thank you very much. It is you who is lovely and wonderful. And I am so fascinated by your art piece. One of them has become my virtual background for today. Um, so I'm really fascinated by Madhubani. I heard, and I tell me if it's true, that people growing up in Bihar just learn Madhubani art by osmosis. They just look around and get it. Is that how you learned it? How did your introduction to Madhubani art happen? Absolutely. So you're absolutely right when you say that people growing up in Bihar learn it by absorbing it from their environment. Uh, that's pretty much how I learned it too, except that my mom started an institute in 1992. So that's when um, in my introduction, you mentioned that I have been exhibiting learning and dealing in art uh, from 1982. It's 1992. It's about 27 years back is, where, uh, is when my mom started this institute for all these artists who are underprivileged, uh, who were underprivileged, uh, but still had that, um, you know, artistic skill in them. Um, she tried to fine tune the skills to make it sellable. And uh, like you mentioned, uh, people in Bihar do practice this art on the walls and floors of uh, their homes of, or, or of the community, um, I mean, of any community place. Uh, my mom tried to bring it on canvas, paper, uh, fabric and you know movable things that people outside of Bihar could buy and provide uh, uh, rewards to these artists who are although quite artistic but are not able to step out of their geographic uh, boundary. Wow that's really so cool to see that there was a non-profit organization that started and it became an educational opportunity for you. Really cool Absolutely. to your mom. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so I would just come home uh, after school every day and uh, this work would happen in our living room and in my mom's room and I would just eat over there. We would talk to artists, we would interact with them, learn the process. So it was all happening while I was growing up. So I absorbed it. Uh, it was through osmosis that I learned it and uh, yeah, and the, yeah. Here I Wow, wow to have that kind of an after school program at home is just incredible. I would think to, you know, especially work with traditional artists. I think that's a real joy and an opportunity that uh, not everybody can have. And then you went on, I see, to get a gold medal in finance and, you know, do your MBA and, uh, and then came back to art again. So could you tell me about that journey a little bit? Sure. So as was the norm during then, you had to focus on your academics, art, dance, uh, any other activity was extra curricular, not even co-curricular, right? So my parents were very focused on both my brother and I getting good education, uh, high education. So they sent us to Bangalore, 
sent me to Bangalore first because I'm the older one. Um, and I did my uh, graduation from there and then I went to do my MBA. I was always good uh, academically, so I just went on pursuing one uh, course after the other. And uh, I did uh, fairly well, so I earned my gold medal over there. Um, I worked in a corporate for a few years before I got married. After getting married, uh, my husband was working over here. So we were supposed to live in the, I mean, I was supposed to move here and we were supposed to live over here for a very short period of time. So after I came here, I didn't have work visa and I didn't think it was worth uh, worthwhile applying for one because we were supposed to go back very, very soon. Um, so I just started looking around, uh, enjoying the United States of America, you know, like how anybody would. And I uh, stumbled upon Michael's. And that was my party place. I was like, okay, this place is made for me. I picked every sing almost every single piece that was available uh, for painting over there. And I brought it home and I started painting. So after painting, I didn't know what to do with them. I had quite like a collection. So there was a mandir in Minneapolis. That's where I had landed first. Um, I went there. I spoke to a shop in the mandir. And I said, I'll donate all my pieces. And whatever you raise, you can just... Uh, uh, you know, give it uh, to the mandir. So this is how it started. This is how I came back to doing art for majority uh, of my time. And uh, one thing led to the other and I, I got my work permit. We stayed back for longer. I got my work permit and I thought, who's going to go back to number crunching again on laptop? Uh, let's start uh, enjoying the colors of life. And I'm doing it professionally now. Colors is what you do. I can see. I love your art, especially because of the use of very vibrant color. Now, you said you, you have been trained in Madhubani and yet you are bringing a lot of contemporary flair to it. And so could you describe your style of art? How do you merge these two styles and uh, where do they intersect? Where do they diverge? Sure. So uh, Madhubani has a very structured way of doing things. So uh, we have to draw a border. Every line will have to be double line. There is lots of hatching, which we call kachni in uh, Madhubani style. Uh, there's a lot of uh, filling work, which is called bharni. Filling work has to stay within the line and, uh, uh, you know, things like that. So there are certain norms that we follow in Madhubani. But I always was very excited about colors and I wanted to just play with them. I wanted to play with the rich textures that we can create using colors. So I tried to, and I, ha I don't have a formal training in any form of art. So, so Madhubani is what I know how to do and uh, contemporary is where I, is what I enjoy. So I was like, okay, let me just experiment on a few pieces and try to blend these two together. So I make my uh, subjects, so humans, or animals or birds, my subjects are done in Madhubani style. And for the background, I just go crazy. So I take all my colors, I throw in uh, the colors, I use some textures, I use some tools to just play around with them. Uh, subjects I cannot do in any other style because I don't know how to do it and they are very complicated. So I still stick to Madhubani and uh, for backgrounds or for you know ancillary peripheral elements, I use uh, contemporary style, which is just playing with colors and uh, just enjoying myself. Wow, that is really creative and uh, out of the box thinking for sure, I think. And uh, so, but uh, you would say that, uh, I know you mentioned that contemporary is very creative, but I assume that Madhubani is equally creative, even though there's a very strong framework to it, would you say? Of course, Madhubani is very creative. You can um, express various different concepts and ideas through Madhubani. And there are various different artists in India and outside who bring their own personality through Madhubani. So even uh, within the boundary, you can still um, experiment with various, um, uh, you know, various strokes, various patterns in Madhubani to create your own style. And, and for a, an artist who is in this field, I can look at a piece and I can tell you who's a, which artist is that. If I know. Because every artist pours their own personality and own, uh, own, their own self into every art form they create. And that's why even after you would see like five different Madhubani artists, each, works, uh, each one's work will be different. And those five would be able to point out and tell you, this is that artist's work. Wow. So, I, yeah, that's where the creativity element comes in. Yeah, so I guess it doesn't matter 
uh, you know, that it has a strong structure. In fact, the structure probably guides the art, but at the end of the day, it's your expressions that come out from in your soul that you're pouring out of the art. And uh, Absolutely. that is really, really fantastic to hear that. Um, so I know that you have an MBA, you know, you spent a lot of time learning and studying. So has that influenced what you're doing as a now as a full-time artist, right? Yes. So uh, lots of my friends ask me this question. They're like, Aarti karna tha to itna kyu padhi? <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. You know, Aarti karna tha to why did I go to Bang Bangalore and, you know, spend so many years there? But I'm so thankful for every day of my life that I spent in Bangalore for my education because now I'm, I'm employing all the skills I learned over there into what I do. Uh, like, for instance, uh, uh, MBA is a tough job. So there they teach you how to be, uh, how to think out of the box, how to be creative and how to provide solution to every problem that you come up with, that, that you face. So you have to come up with a solution, um, a, a creative, you have to think creatively to break out of the problem and provide a solution. Uh, that develops into the attitude of the person. So I'm employing that on one side and on the other side, I'm using the technical, uh, you know, technical skills I acquired there, like um, trend analysis, consumer behavior, uh, costing strategies, uh, return on investment. So although I was taught that for a larger magnitude, but uh, I can still employ those skills and those formulas and those everything that I learned to my work on a, you know, on a limited scale. Uh, but I would, I would be aware of what's, what would work and what wouldn't because I have that kind of background training. Fantastic, fantastic. So all the learning is being put to good use, whether it is art or it is uh, MBA, you know, that you have had. Absolutely. And I on that note, I have to tell you this, that my grandmom used to be around when this was happening at home. And uh, on the days when I wouldn't want to sit with them, wouldn't learn, she would tell me, you will one day later in your life, you will thank me for pushing you to go over there and learn. I wouldn't be there uh, then, but you will remember um, this that I said. Thankfully, she's still there and I give her a call and I tell her that, see, you told me you won't be there, but you are there and I'm right here to tell you that you were absolutely right. Any kind of knowledge learned anywhere never goes for a waste. This is so, so true that it has become an income generating opportunity, not just you know, of course, passion and fun, but you know, it has become your life and an important part of your life. So for parents who are giving art education to their children, know that it might become a full-time occupation and there's much opportunity, right? I mean, that's Absolutely. what all of you It was are. not even a plan B, forget the mainstream, uh, you know, profession. I never thought this would be what I would do for a living. Exactly. No, I think that's beautiful. Now you never learned art formally, you said, and yet you teach art very, very extensively. So is there, um, I mean, should people be learning art or it's just a natural talent or what do you gain from learning formal uh, training in art? So I never learned art, but I saw people developing courses around me. I saw how the second step would come, should come only after the first step. And this happened uh, through a lot of trial and error right in front of my eyes. So even though there was no uh, set syllabus, my mom uh, with these artists developed a syllabus to teach women, uh, young girls actually, uh, how to train in this art form that they can get like a formal and methodical uh, uh, education in this to be able to make it, uh, uh, make it work for them. And I was right there when all of this was happening. So I gained from it and I spoke to my mom and I started uh, teaching over here and I and she uh, shared her insights she shared me the entire syllabus that she sorry and I use it here to um, uh, to teach my students so it is quite important where you can be as creative and try and break out of boundaries uh, to be to create your own art pieces that is absolutely acceptable but if you gain a formal training a methodical training it just adds to uh, your creative your creativity it just supports you in a on a very strong in a very strong way to take your passion your creativity your uh, love for art forward uh, in a nice way 
Beautiful, beautiful. Um, now you have been giving your time to many causes and I can see that uh, giving back has, comes from your genes, from your mother. Uh, but I would say, I, would, I wanted to ask you why indie art and uh, you know, why did you decide to join with Akal? And I know that you're going to offer a workshop. So uh, you know, what do you think people can expect in that is something also I wanted to ask. Sure, so um, uh, yes, uh, charity is not an option in our household. It is the way of life. Um, and uh, the other philosophy that my family follows is teach them to fish. Don't give them the fish, teach them to fish. And this is why uh, I joined Hands with Indy and with Akal because you guys are providing resources for people to employ, to fend for themselves. It's not that you're just giving a house for, to somebody to live or food for uh, like 5,000 people on one day. It does not work. You're teaching them how to learn to fend for themselves, to earn for themselves, to run a livelihood and help others. And uh, this is the philosophy by which I operate, which is why I joined uh, Akal. And yes, we have been uh, associated with various different causes. In fact, I teach my students to lend a hand. And right when this pandemic broke out, uh, we did uh, run a program called Art with Heart, where all most of my students, uh, students of my school, they created free art tutorials, which we circulated on the internet for people to uh, learn Madhubani art from, to keep them productively busy. We didn't know it's going to last this long. It happened, uh, it started in March and Seattle was one of the first uh, big cities which was hit in the US. And we were at home, kids didn't know what to do, the schools were closed. So we came up with this idea. I, I started like this tiny seed that grew into a tree thanks to uh, all the support that I got. And I have people, I mean, grandmoms writing from the remote areas in India, sending me pictures of the work that they learned from um, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds through the videos. Oh so it empowers the satisfaction and empowers you to do more and give more, to, uh, give more out to people. That was first initiative. The second one is Reformations Lab. So after the pandemic went on for quite some time, we heard that in India, a lot of people, uh, especially daily wage workers, have been rendered unemployed. So we found a way to employ them uh, through this initiative called Reformations Lab, where we are getting uh, cotton, organic, organic cotton masks with filters. So all these needle workers, these daily wage workers who sit on the sides of the road, who stitch you know, blouses in an hour, and uh, do the repair, they don't have anywhere to go. So we are just trying to employ them on a daily basis and getting masks, getting them to make masks, which everybody is going to use now. And we got uh, the first lot important, imported and we are hoping to be able to generate uh, funds for, from those to uh, have them do more work for us. Right, actually Akal also, you know, we employed many of our rural women and we have created uh, we have distributed actually about 1.2 million masks um, all over Thank rural you. India where the frontline workers had you know trouble getting masks and things like that so it's such a beautiful idea that you have for masks I think that's much much needed and a great way to put people to work I can see you Absolutely. and me think very similarly so excellent excellent so what are people going to look forward in the workshop that you're going to offer? in the workshop we are doing uh, this art form called Madhubani Godna art Godna means tattoo and tattoos have been a very integral part of rural and primitive India um, they used to have uh, uh, kids have their parents names or the village names tattooed on the hands so when they go out uh, and if they get lost, they could be brought back to their village. Um, so that has been developed into a form of art within the Madhubani style. It is not very popular as much as the rest of the Madhubani is, but uh, it is practiced quite a bit. So I thought that that would be something that people would be interested in, in, interested in because not many times we get to see that variation of Madhubani. Definitely. Tattoo sounds great to me. So maybe I will attend and try to invite some of that art <laughs> godna that makes really good sense wonderful any final words of wisdom that you might give to an aspiring artist what do you tell your students i tell everybody suno sabki karo man ki <laughs> to everybody but do what you uh, what you feel like doing uh, yeah and i would just say go with the flow always have like a a hobby that you should develop uh, which might serve as a plan B later on in life. So, 
yeah so just uh, try and do your education that is very important in every field of life no matter whatever you're planning to do but always develop and work on one hobby whether it's gardening cooking baking art dance music or all of it uh, work on one or few more, uh, such things uh, which is co curricular extra curricular that later you can um, use maybe um, in some way yeah like you it might become a plan a instead of a plan b so <laughs> we never know wonderful deepthi ji we really look forward to the workshop and thank you so much for all that you do for the world at large and of course for helping ekal with the indie art competition thank you for taking the time today to speak to us and we look forward to seeing what the future holds with deepthi ji in it thank you so much of course thank you so much ranjini ji namaskar